Alphabet of Birds This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. The Alphabet of Birds By an unknown author, published by McLaughlin Brothers, New York, 1885 A. The albatross is a large bird. It flies for days without rest, following ships in the southern seas to get food. Thus it may be caught with a hook. B. The bell bird is white, as large as a pigeon, and lives in South America. As it sounds its call, like a church bell, its horn stands erect. C. The canary, named from the Canary Islands, whence it was brought, is often green, but generally yellow. Of all birds it sings most sweetly. D. The duck lives about the water, and dives to the bottom for food. Its oily feathers do not get wet. Its feet are webbed for swimming. E. The egret lives in American swamps. For food it catches mice, frogs, and fish. Its body feathers are white, while its train is cream-colored. F. The falcon has its home in Europe and Asia. It is fond of lizards, snakes, and birds. Thus it has been trained by men to hunt game birds. G. The grosbeak is naturally red, but fades in color when shut in a cage. It is kind to other birds, often adopting and rearing their young. H. The hen is the most useful of fowls. She lays eggs which we eat, and scratches the soft earth for worms to feed her brood of chickens. I. J. The J is about the size of a pigeon, and blue in color. When tame, it learns to talk. Often it cries like a hawk, to frighten little birds. K. The kingfisher lives about streams and lakes. It sits upon a branch or log, and darts upon the fish in the water. It has a loud, harsh cry. L. The lyre bird is named from its tail, which is often ten feet long. Its home is in Australia. Its voice is loud, but not disagreeable. M. The macaw is a large bird, fond of long flights. It is very gaily colored, like all South American birds. It feeds upon the palm fruit. N. The nightingale lives in England and is famous the world over for its song. Its peculiarity is that it sings in the night when flying. O. The ostrich is the largest bird known. It is raised for its long curly plumes, which are dyed of every color and used to trim ladies' hats. P. The paradise bird is named from the splendor of its plumage. It is the most gorgeous of the feathered tribe living in the East Indies. Q. The quail is found both in Europe and America, and is prized as a game bird. In spring and summer it makes a clear, musical whistle. R. The robin is seen any summer's day feeding on our lawn. He is friendly to men, and should not be frightened or hurt to drive him away. S. The spoonbill is nearly purely white. Its bill is long and broad, whence its name. It wades in the water to catch fish for food. T. 
The tailor bird is noted for its peculiar nest, which is made of one or two leaves sewed so as to form a bag. It uses its bill for a needle. U V The vulture is ten feet across its wings. It feeds on the bodies of dead animals. W. The woodcock is much sought by the sportsmen of England and America. It catches worms by running its long bill into the soft ground. X. The xanthornus, or bobolink, varies much in color, according to age. Its nest is made of long grasses woven into a purse-like form. Why, The yellow hammer is an English bird different from our own. Its sad cry causes it to be feared and hated by many people. Z. The ouzel is often hunted with falcons, and is said to afford fine sport, as, by its quick motions, it is able to lead the hawk a long chase. End of the Alphabet of Birds Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California For LibriVox, Fall 2008Aunt Louise's The Globe Alphabet. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Laurie Ann Walden. Aunt Louise's The Globe Alphabet. Author unknown. A stands for the anchor we cast in the sea, to hold the ship fast where we wish it to be. B stands for the baker who makes men their bread, the great staff of life on which nations are fed. C stands for a Chinaman, here one you see, walking amidst his plantations of tea. D for dromedary, or deserts he strays, and goes without water for many long days. E stands for elk, in cold countries he's found, with elks the American forests abound. F stands for the fruit that in summer we eat, and find so refreshingly cooling and sweet. G stands for giraffe, which is able, you see, to eat the top leaves from the branch of a tree. H for hippopotamus, savage and strong. By African rivers he wanders along. I's for Italian, an organ he grinds. J is for jewels of various kinds. K stands for kangaroos, sitting and leaping. Hunters to kill them a keen watch are keeping. L stands for the lion, of forests the king. With terrible roaring he makes the woods ring. M stands for the mill, where by water's great power the wheat is ground down to a very fine flour. N stands for a nabob, a lord of the east, who likes on strong coffee and sweetmeats to feast. O stands for the organ, delightful the sound, in church when its music floats solemnly round. P stands for the peacock, a bird very vain, of feathers he sweeps on the earth like a train. Q stands for quadrille, which the little ones dance, as well we all think, as the children in France. R stands for reindeer, very swiftly it goes, carrying the Laplander over the snows. S stands for the sculptor, who statues can make, and portraits with chisel and mallet can take. T stands for the tiger, a terrible beast that lives in the jungles and woods of the east. U stands for the uniform, in which are seen the soldiers who fight for their country and queen. V stands for the vulture, a great bird of prey. W for the wagon that carries the hay. X for the xylographer, cutting on wood, a picture which printed he thinks will be good. Y stands for the yacht that bounds o'er the sea, a prettier cutter you don't often see. Z stands for a zebra, whose elegant shape the sculptor, we think, for his model might take. End of Aunt Louise's The Globe Alphabet
The Absurd ABC by Walter Crane. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Absurd ABC by Walter Crane. A for the apple or alphabet pie, which all get a slice of, come taste it and try. B is the baby who gave Mr. Bunting full many a long day's rabbit skin hunting. C for the cat that played on the fiddle when cows jumped higher than high diddle diddle. D for the dame with her pig at the stile. Tis said they got over, but not yet a while. E for the Englishman, ready to make fast, the giant who wanted to have him for breakfast. F for the frog in the story you know, begun with a wooing, but ending in woe. G for Goosey Gander who wandered upstairs, and met the old man who objected to prayers. H for poor Humpty, who, after his fall, felt obliged to resign his seat on the wall. I for the inn where they wouldn't give beer, to one with too much and no money, I fear. J does for poor Jack and also for Jill, who had so disastrous a tumble downhill. K for calm Kitty at dinner who sat, while all the good folks watched the dog and the cat. L for little man, gun and bullets complete, who shot the poor duck and was proud of the feet. M for Miss Muffet with that horrid spider, just dropped into tea and a chat beside her. N for the numerous children, they who were often too much for their mothers in shoe. O oh, the old person that cobwebs did spy, and went up to sweep em, oh, ever so high. P for the pie made of blackbirds to sing, a song fit for supper, a dish for a king. Q for Queen Anne who sat in the sun, till she, more than the lily, resembled the bun. R stands for Richard and Robert, those men, who didn't get up one fine morning till ten. S for the snail that showed wonderful fight, putting no less than twenty-four tailors to flight. T stands for Tom, the son of the piper. May his principles change as his years grow riper. U for the unicorn keeping his eye on the coveted crown and its council the lion. V for the victuals including the drink the old woman lived on, surprising to think. W for the woman who not over nice made very short work of the three blind mice. X is the X that is found upon buns which daughters not liking may come in for sons. Why for Yankee Doodle of ancient renown, both he and his pony that took him to town? Z for the zany who looked like a fool, for when he was young he neglected his school. End of Absurd ABC Recording by Rhonda Fetterman The Alphabet of Animals by Ernest Grissett. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jeanette Seelig. Alphabet of Animals. A stands for Ape, who has four clever hands. He lives in great woods in the tropical lands. B stands for boar, a most savage wild pig, with his terrible tusks 
for roots he can dig. C stands for cat, who grows fond of the house and very much likes to run after a mouse. D stands for donkey, a poor patient beast, who thinks some fresh thistles a very great feast. E is for elephant, mighty in size, but kind to all children and gentle and wise. F is for fox, who lives down underground, and often is chased by the huntsman and hound. G is for goat, o'er the Welsh hills it flies, and very rich milk to the children supplies. H is for horse, one of man's greatest friends, on our wants and our pleasures he gladly attends. I is for Ibex, a goat with long horns. He lives on the mountains, the lowlands he scorns. J is for Jaguar, a fierce beast of prey, who hides in American forests by day. K is for Kangaroo, upright it keeps, except when it jumps o'er the ground in great leaps. L stands for lynx clothed in fur thick and good, which finds home and food in the depths of the wood. The Zoological Gardens When you go to the zoo, you must look for all the animals in this alphabet. You will find the ape and the elephant and the fox there, and the lynx, the porcupine, the rhinoceros, and the tiger. You will also see the lion, the king of beasts, who can be tamed, and is then as good and kind as a dog, and the leopards that jump about so nimbly. There also you will see the brown bears climbing up their pole, and you will know then that they can easily climb trees also. Give them a bun, for they are as fond of sweets as children are. Then go and look at the seal in his tank of water. You will see how fond he is of his keeper. The seal is a very sensible creature. His home is near the North Pole, and his thick, soft fur makes him able to bear the cold seas and to lie on the ice without being frozen. Seals are kind to their little ones and live in families, Papa and Mama Seal and the children. Be sure not to pat the wolf, taking him for a dog, as a child we knew once did, as he may perhaps bite. Indeed, it is best not to touch any creature in the gardens. The polar bear is a fine old fellow, but would be happier in his home of ice and snow. His fur is so thick that he must be much too warm in summer. Go and look at the giraffes. They are elegant-looking animals. Their long necks are given them that they may feed on the branches and boughs of high trees, and when they have to stoop to drink, they look rather awkward. The giraffe runs very fast, and is so strong that it can fight with the lion, though it runs away from him always if it can. What wonderful creatures God has made! Lions, tigers, leopards, bears, camels, and the others, nearly all of them for the use or pleasure of men. We are sure you will think of how great and good God is when you visit the zoo. M is for marmot. Its home's in the ground, and good stores of nuts and corn in it are found. N for Newfoundland dog, faithful and brave, and ready from drowning dear children to save. O is for otter, which lives in the streams and breakfasts on fish when the early dawn beams. P is for porcupine, up its quills stick. If you touched him, they surely would give you a prick. Q is for quagga, or Africa's plains it gallops, or feeding in troops it remains. R for rhinoceros, thick-skinned and strong, to which two great horns on his hard nose belong. S is for squirrel, who sits on a tree, when cracking his nuts very happy is he. T for the tiger, most savage of beasts, who on all living creatures most readily feasts. U is for unicorn, well known in fable. To find him alive, I think no one is able. 
V for Vicuña. On mountains it lives, and soft, silky wool for the use of man gives. W for Walrus. In cold polar seas it swims midst the icebergs with safety and ease. X. Extinct animal. You won't regret that creatures like this one no longer are met. Y is for Yak, the wild ox of Tibet. The Tartars are glad its long, soft fleece to get. Z is for Zebra, the brave desert steed who flies o'er the African plains at full speed. End of The Alphabet of Animals Alphabet of Country Scenes This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Read by Dennis Sayers Alphabet of Country Scenes Written by an unknown author and published by McLaughlin Brothers in 1880. A stands for Arabian, with Neptune to guard, all saddled and bridled, the pet of our yard. B for the bees that fly out here and there, and bring to the hives the sweet honey with care. C for the cows, in the shade of the trees, they are chewing the cud, and seem quite at their ease. D for ducks, swimming and playing together. They care not for rain, nor the stormiest weather. E for the eggs which we find in the nest. They still feel quite warm from the hen's downy breast. F are the fowls, the hens and the cocks. Take care, my fine birdies, beware of the fox. G is the goat with two kids, young and gay. They run to their mother, then scamper away. H is the horse, so sleek and so strong, he draws the hay cart to the meadow along. I is the island where Johnny doth wish to sit on the bank in the summer and fish. K are the kittens that live in the stable. They will catch all the mice as soon as they're able. L is for Lucy, who waits at the stile and puts down the pail, for she's resting a while. M is the milk, which is good, pussy thinks, and so uninvited and slyly she drinks. N stands for the nuts. And when the lessons are done, two boys can go nutting much better than one. O for the owl, that prowling at night steals chicks from our barn in the quiet moonlight. P for some pigs, which have strayed from their sty. But, of course, we'll return there to bed by and by. Q stands for the quince I have plucked from a tree. To flavor the tart Mary's making for me. R for the rabbits, white, spotted, and gray. Just see how that little one nibbles away. S for the sheep, with their coats of soft wool. They stand in the meadows, so pleasant and cool. T for the turkey, who stately doth sail with long sweeping wings and a wide spreading tail. U stands for Ursula and V for the vine that yields her fine clusters in harvesting time. W for the wheat and for Whitey the calf who nibbles away at the grain and the chaff. X means on a banknote ten dollars is clear. On a barrel it stands for the strength of the beer. Y 
stands for our farmyard, where chicks love to feed on the oats and the barley and other good seed. Z is for Zachary, shutting the gate. So, good night, little children. It's getting quite late. End of Alphabet of Country Scenes Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California for LibriVox Fall 2008An Alphabet of Celebrities by Oliver Herford. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. An Alphabet of Celebrities by Oliver Herford. A's. Albert Edward, well-meaning but flighty, who invited King Arthur, the blameless and mighty, to meet Alcibiades and Aphrodite. B is for Bernhardt, who fails to awaken, much feeling in Bismarck, Barabbas, and Bacon. C is Columbus, who tries to explain how to balance an egg to the utter disdain of Confucius, Carlyle, Cleopatra, and Cain. D is for Diogenes, Darwin, and Dante, who delight in the dance of a darling Bacante. E is for Edison, making believe he's invented a clever contrivance for Eve, who complained that she never could laugh in her sleeve. F is for Franklin, who fearfully shocks the feelings of Fenelon, Faber, and Fox. G is Godiva, whose great bareback feet, though Guno and Goldsmith implore and entreat, H is for Handel, who pours out his soul through the bagpipes to Howells and Homer, who roll on the floor in an ecstasy past all control. I is for Ibsen, reciting a play, while Irving and Ingersoll hasten away. J is for Johnson, who only says pish, to Jonah, who tells him his tale of a fish. K is the Kaiser, who kindly repeats some original verses to Kipling and Keats. L is La Fontaine, who finds he is unable to interest Luther and Liszt in his fable, while Lowy continues to dance on the table. M is Macduff, who's prevailed upon Milton, and Montaigne and Manon to each try a kilt on. N is Napoleon, shrouded in gloom with Nero, Narcissus, and Nordau, to whom he's explaining the manual of arms with a broom. O is for Oliver casting aspersion on Omar, that awfully dissolute Persian, though secretly longing to join the diversion. P is for Peter, who hollers, no, no, through the keyhole to Payne, Paderewski, and Poe. Q is the queen, so noble and free. For further particulars, look under V. R's Rubinstein playing that old thing in F to Rollo and Rembrandt, who wish they were deaf. S is for Swinburne, who, seeking the true, the good and the beautiful, visits the zoo where he chances on Sappho and Mr. Sardou, and Socrates all with the same end in view. T is for Talleyrand toasting Miss Truth, by the side of her well in a glass of vermouth, and presenting Mark Twain as the friend of his youth. U is for Undine pursuing Ulysses, and Umberto who flee her damp death-dealing kisses. V is Victoria, noble and true. For further particulars, look under Q. W's. Wagner, who sang and played lots for Washington, Wesley, and good Dr. Watts. His prurient plots pained Wesley and Watts, but Washington said he enjoyed them in spots. 
X's Antippe, who's having her say. His purient plots pained Wesley and Watts, and frightening the army of Xerxes away. Why is for young the great Mormon saint, who thinks little Yum Yum and Yvette so quaint? He has to be instantly held in restraint. Z is for Zola presenting La Terre to Zenobia the Brave and Zuleika the Fair, whose blushes they artfully conceal with their hair. End of an Alphabet of Celebrities Recording by Rhonda Fetterman Aunt Louisa's Alphabet of Fruits by London Toy Books this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Alana Jordan. Aunt Louisa's Alphabet of Fruits by London Toy Books. A is for apples, so rosy and round, which the children delight to pick up from the ground. B for the blackberry, open to all, to the rich and the poor, to cottage and hall. C is for currants, which Dora, you see, is picking for tarts from the red currant tree. D for the damsons, we make into jam, which is often in Germany eaten with ham. E for the elder, with berries so brown, you may sell them for two pence a quart in the town. F for the fig, which in Italy grows, all temptingly laid in a basket in rows. G for the grapes, which beside the swift Rhine, the peasant girls gather to make into wine. H is the hazelnut, found in the cups, where the squirrel from branch to branch playfully hops. I, ivy berries, both purple and blue, you may not think them fruit, but I'm sure the birds do. J for the sweet russet, jargonelle pear, which on shelves in the storeroom is laid up with care. K for the kernel that pays us so well, for the trouble we've taken to open the shell. L is the fragrant and pale-colored lime, growing ripe in the sun of a tropical clime. M for the melon the Frenchwoman sells by the arch within sound of the old minster bells. N is the nectarine kind Jenny took to the sick girl who lived by the side of the brook. O is for orange, so juicy and sweet, which Ellen has brought for the baby to eat. P for the peaches, which little Anne's ball, to old William's dismay, has struck down from the wall. Q for the quince, growing down in the glade, of which Sarah the cook will make nice marmalade. R for the raspberries, gathered at dawn, for the school children's tea, by and by on the lawn. S is for strawberry, brilliant and red, which we look for amongst the green leaves of its bed. T for the tamarinds, brought from the west, with ginger and guava, in mariner's chest. U and V have no fruit, but the great bearing vine grows in Italy, Spain, and beside the swift Rhine. W for the walnuts at Christmas we eat, and make of the shells such a capital fleet. X, Y, Z I must leave, but you may, if you please, call them fruit in the guise of unknown quantities. End of Aunt Louisa's Alphabet of Fruits Recording by Alana Jordan Suburban Mom on YouTube.com
A Nonsense Alphabet by Edward Lear. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Nonsense Alphabet by Edward Lear. A. Arch. A was an area arch where washerwomen sat. They made a lot of lovely starch to starch Papa's cravat. B. Bottle. B was a bottle blue, which was not very small. Papa, he filled it full of beer, and then he drank it all. C. Cat. C was Papa's grey cat, who caught a squeaky mouse. She pulled him by his twirly tail all about the house. D. Duck D was Papa's white duck, who had a curly tail. One day it ate a great fat frog beside a little snail. E. Egg E was a little egg upon the breakfast table. Papa came in and ate it up as fast as he was able. F. Fish. F was a little fish. Cook in the river took it. Papa said, Cook, cook, bring a dish. And cook, be quick and cook it. G. Gun. G was Papa's new gun. He put it in a box. And then he went and bought a bun and walked about the docks. H. Hat. H was Papa's new hat. He wore it on his head. Outside it was completely black, but inside it was red. I inkstand. I was an inkstand new. Papa, he likes to use it. He keeps it in his pocket now for fear that he should lose it. J. Jam. J was some apple jam of which Papa ate part, but all the rest he took away and stuffed into a tart. K. Kite. K. was a great new kite. Papa, he saw it fly above a thousand chimney pots and all about the sky. L. Lamp. L. was a fine new lamp, but when the wick was lit, Papa, he said, this light ain't good. I cannot read a bit. M. Mince. M. was a dish of mince. It looked so good to eat. Papa, he quickly ate it up and said, this is a treat. N. Nut. N was a nut that grew high up upon a tree. Papa, who could not reach it, said, that's much too high for me. O. Owl. O was an owl who flew all in the dark away. Papa said, what an owl you are. Why don't you fly by day? P. Pig. P was a little pig, went out to take a walk. Papa, he said, if Piggy dead, he'd all turn into pork. Q. Quince. Q was a quince that hung upon a garden tree. Papa, he brought it with him home and ate it with his tea. R. Rug. R. was a railway rug, extremely large and warm. Papa, he wrapped it round his head in a most dreadful storm. S. Stick. S. was Papa's new stick, Papa's new thumping stick, to thump extremely wicked boys because it was so thick. T. Tumbler. T. was a tumbler full of punch, all hot and good. Papa, he drank it up when in the middle of a wood. U. Urn. You was a silver urn, full of hot scalding water. Papa said, if that urn were mine, I'd give it to my daughter. V. Villain. V. was a villain once he stole a piece of beef. Papa, he said, oh, dreadful man, that villain is a thief. W. Watch. W. was a watch of gold. It told the time of day. So that Papa knew when to come and when to go away. X. Xerxes. 
X was King Xerxes, whom Papa much wished to know. But this he could not do, because Xerxes died long ago. Why youth? Why was a youth who kicked and screamed and cried like mad? Papa, he said, your conduct is abominably bad. Z Zebra Z was a zebra striped and streaked with lines of black. Papa said once he thought he'd like a ride upon his back. End of alphabet Alphabet of Old Testament History by Pot and Amory This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Carolyn Francis Alphabet of Old Testament History by Pot and Amory. A was the first man who disobeyed God, and brought down a curse on the earth which he trod. B was a prophet who rode on an ass, which spake and refused a bright angel to pass. C was a man who was branded by God, the blood of his brother cried out from the sod. D amid lions in safety abides. He's a reader of dreams and strange writings besides. E was a queen, young, beauteous, and brave, who risked her own life, her nation, to save. F was a judgment in anger God sent, for men of their wicked ways would not repent. G was a mighty man, proud and defiant, with a sling and small stone, tell me who slew the giant. H in the desert her child left to die, Till an angel of God shewed a well that was nigh. I was a patriarch, gentle and kind, J was his son who deceived him when blind, K was a daughter of meek, patient Job, A pattern of trust and belief in his God. L was a man who was wealthy, not wise, from the judgments of Sodom in terror he flies. M was a lawgiver, full of great zeal, whose object through life was the Israelites' weal. N was a man who once lived in the ark, which appeared in the waste like a star in the dark. O was a kind man, who fed in a cave a hundred good prophets whose lives he did save. P was a king whose God's judgments defied, and was drowned with his hosts in the sea that was dried. Q were the birds which an angry God gave, to the people his arm wrought such wonders to save. R was the grandmother of a great king, whose beautiful psalms in God's praises we sing. S is a strong man who a riddle relates, from a Philistine city he bore off the gates. T was God's house, which a wise king did build, Jehovah's bright glory that sanctuary filled. U was the river that Daniel stood by, V was the mystery shewn from on high. W was the woman who pretended to call dead Samuel up at the bidding of Saul. X was the number of certain commands God wrote on two stones in Moses' hands. Y is the name of a thing that was laid on the necks of the oxen, of wood they were made. Z was a captive king, bound with a chain, whose eyes were put out when he saw his son slain. End of Alphabet of Old Testament History The Anti-Slavery Alphabet by Anonymous This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Alana Jordan 
The Anti-Slavery Alphabet by Anonymous In the morning, sow thy seed. To our little readers, listen, children all, listen to our earnest call. You are very young, tis true, but there's much that you can do. Even you can plead with men that they not buy slaves again, and that those they may have be, quickly set at liberty, they may hearken what you say, though from us they turn away. Sometimes, when from school you walk, you can with your playmates talk, tell them of the slave child's fate, motherless and desolate, and you can refuse to take candy, sweet meat, pie or cake, saying no, unless tis free. The slave shall not work for me. Thus, dear little children, each may some useful lesson teach. Thus each one may help to free this fair land from slavery. A is an abolitionist, a man who wants to free the wretched slave and give to all an equal liberty. B is a brother with a skin of somewhat darker hue. But in our Heavenly Father's sight, he is as dear as you. C is the cotton field, to which this injured brother's driven, when, as the white man's slave he toils, from early morn till even. D is the driver, cold and stern, who follows, whip in hand, to punish those dare to rest or disobey command. E is the eagle soaring high, an emblem of the free. But while we chain our brother man, our type he cannot be. F is the heart-sick fugitive, the slave who runs away, and travels through the dreary night, but hides himself by day. G is the gong, whose rolling sound, before the morning light, calls up the little sleeping slave to labor until night. H is the hound his master trained, and called to scent the track of the unhappy fugitive, and bring him trembling back. I is the infant from the arms of its fond mother torn, and at a public auction sold with horses, cows, and corn. J is the jail, upon whose floor that wretched mother lay, until her cruel master came and carried her away. K is the kidnapper, who stole that little child and mother, shrieking, it clung to her, but he tore it from each other. L is the lash that brutally he swung around his head, threatening that if it cried again, He'd whip it till was dead. M is the merchant of the north, Who buys what slaves produce, So they are stolen, whipped, and worked, For his and for our use. N is the negro rambling free, In his far distant home, Delighting neath the palm tree shade, And cocoa nut to roam. O is the orange tree that bloomed beside his cabin door, when white men stole him from his home to see it nevermore. P is the parent sorrowing and weeping all alone, the child he loved to lean upon, his only son is gone. Q is the quarter where the slave on coarsest food is fed, and where with toil and sorrow worn, he seeks his wretched bed. R is the rice swamp, dank and lone, Where weary day by day, He labors till the fever wastes His strength and life away. S is the sugar that the slave is toiling hard to make, To put into your pie and tea, Your candy and your cake. T is the rank tobacco plant, Raised by slave labor, too, A poisonous and nasty thing For gentlemen to chew. U is for Upper Canada, 
where the poor slave has found rest after all his wanderings for it is british ground v is the vessel in whose dark noisome and stifling hold hundreds of africans are packed brought o'er the seas and sold w is the whipping post to which the slave is bound while on his naked back the lash makes many a bleeding wound x is for xerxes famed of yore a warrior stern was he he fought with swords let truth and love our only weapons be y is for youth the time for all bravely to war with sin and think not it can ever be too early to begin z is a zealous man sincere faithful and just and true an earnest pleader for the slave will you not be so too end of the anti-slavery alphabet recording by alana jordan st louis missouri